Welcome. Cool, so I'm Nikki Barron. I'm the founder of Kitten and Teeth, and if you're new here, a little bit what I do is I help musicians and other artists uh, turn their passions into small businesses. Um, and I do that through coaching. So you learn all the fundamentals of how to build a business um, when we work together. So that's me. And my guest today is my roommate, which is how we get to hang out in our awesome backyard, <laughs> uh, Taylor Lynn, who's been a performer for your entire life. You came out of the womb like, hey. C-section, right. <laughs> live performance. <laughs> um, and she's the front woman for Vaudeville Etiquette. Uh, you are also an improv player. You teach improv. You are a, uh, is it a Reiki practitioner? Is that master. A master mm -hmm. Reiki practitioner, like that? Reiki or master practitioner. There you we go. You can combine them, whatever. Um, and you also teach classes on how you can use performance um, for wellness. Mm -hmm. So lots of, lots of knowledge to be shared. Um, so, it's been kind of weird, all of this stuff going on, um, and it's it's been an interesting shift to see performance go from in person and having that energetic exchange very close sometimes, you know, right at the right at the stage, um, if you're a fan, and of course for you on the stage, to now this massive expanse um, from people being online and performing, and then trying to connect with people and their audiences. Uh, through a phone or a television um, so it's been really strange to see and I know in my experience I'm seeing that it doesn't always translate the same yeah um, when we're seeing the same performances that we saw um, people give in person you're watching it on your TV and you're going like I really want to change the channel I don't understand why uh, but when I watch live videos of shows where you have a crowd there I don't have that same experience as if I'm almost like living through the crowd that's already there and that you can see in the footage. So, um, and you and I have had a lot of these conversations. And so I wanted to talk today a little bit about what you're finding is the biggest differences, similarities, and things that you're doing to adjust your, your performance. Cool. So that leads me right into my first question, which is, you just did a live stream with your band. Mm -hmm. What was like, the weirdest, most different part, giving a show in in Numa or no nec nectar, nectar yeah. in Nectar with no one in there <laughs> but the sound guy. Probably been a long time since you only played to the sound guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I will. Yeah, I will say to that point that um, every kind of um, struggling up and coming musician has now has the chops to play to an empty room because of all of those shows <laughs> that you played to like your one friend in the back that's just like slow clapping after every song. But you still have to give a performance as if the room was completely full. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's really, that's always been um, Vaudeville Etiquette's thing. It's like, let's play to a stadium even if we're in a coffee shop. And sometimes that like blows people's face off and sometimes it's great. Um, <laughs> sometimes they're like, that was very energetic for grumpy D's <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> right, right. This, this uh, suburban Starbucks was not ready for that. <laughs> um, uh, but I found that um, there were benefits and, uh, and drawbacks of it. Um, I think the weirdest thing from a performance standard was not having that instant um, return or like instant reaction to gauge kind of where you perform. Our, our shows are always really interactive in that way. We're like, we have a set list, but if, we're, if we get there and everybody just wants to hear like bangers, like we can turn on the spot, which I think a lot of performers can, to cater to that audience. Um, and so we didn't have that. We, we couldn't like watch the comments as that was, um, as it was playing out. So um, a lot of it had to do with just like, um, just kind of blind faith and confidence, um, which actually provided a benefit because the experience became so much more internal and organic, where it was just like, this is going to be an incredibly truthful vaudeville etiquette show first, and that's gonna translate however it will. 
Um, but with that, you have to have a sense of confidence in what you do and and portray that in, in the performance that you're giving. You can't just say like, well, I don't know what's going on, so I'm just gonna do whatever. Um, just kind of generating that like really rich, right performance um, from the core and then trusting that that will emanate out. That was probably the hardest. And then like, I like to tell a lot of jokes like during song, during between songs. And I had no idea if they were landing or not. <laughs> like, and some of them probably did and some of them probably did not, um, which is fine. Um, I think it just very much becomes, all I could think of the whole time was, um, it reminded me of being like eight years old and, and like playing in my room by myself to an audience that didn't exist. Um, and I kind of went back there in my head because eight year old me in my bedroom didn't have any um, agenda. She didn't have any like preconceived ideas of like who she needed to be, what she needed to accomplish. It was all just like pure like joy and creativity. And I think if you can kind of tap into that almost like childlike inhibition, um, that's incredibly magnetic. It's incredibly fun to watch and it's an incredibly like creative, rich space to be performing from. So. Yeah, I feel like you, like, as adults, we learn to, like, read everything that's coming in. And when you're a kid, you're not reading any of it. Like, right. it's all going over your head. So, like, when, as an adult, like, and as a performer, you're on the stage and you're looking out and you're seeing the faces and you're getting that, like, little hit of, like, this is good, I'm doing this right. And so the next song you feel even better and you, like, keep building yeah. on that, like, feedback of, like, yes, this is right, this is good. But if you're not getting that the whole time, you're, like, four songs in and you're going, like, is anyone watching? Is this good? Because uh, you're not getting that like instant feedback from the crowd. Definitely. Um, but yeah, I like the idea of like just be eight year old you where like you don't know if people, you don't know or care if people right. like it. Um, you don't know how to read that on other people. You're just like, nah, I'm going to go and just do what I do and, and yeah. live in that. I think that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. that's a good advice. Well, sure. and it's so easy to get in your head. And I, the performers that I love to watch and the things that I love to see is the, the performers that I cannot take my eyes off are the ones where you can see that they are entertaining themselves first. Like the, the comedians that make themselves laugh before they make an audience laugh, the, uh, the musicians that get themselves off before they get the audience off. Um, are the ones that I just can't take my eyes off. And I think there's something really, there's something really attractive um, about watching someone just like run pleasure and joy through their body. And I think that that's a, a huge tenant of just being a charismatic and engaging performer is like taking care of your sense of entertainment and your sense of fulfillment first, not in a selfish way, but just in a way of like showing people how to experience the thing that you want to share first like almost like leading by example yeah yeah so would you say it's almost like you get to give yourself permission yeah like oh like I can't I can't give you audience what you need so I'm gonna give me what I need and hopefully in turn that gives you what you need and I'm you know we can you kind of have to trust in that relationship you've built that like me giving me giving to me is what attracted you here in the first place Somewhere in our relationship, I started trying to give to you only and forgot about me. Yeah. And now here we are in this performance and we get to like kind of start at that beginning again. Yeah, I so. think that's ex exactly a great way to put it. And and it gives you, it, it sounds terrifying in some ways, but it also gives you such a sense of freedom to like really explore and express exactly who you are and what you want to communicate. Yeah, very cool. Um, so we have a question. Uh, Nick asked, uh, Sounds like you might. There might be a need for a producer's voice in your ear, like a live news anchor or host. Do you think that that would would have been helpful in your live stream to have somebody talking you through? I know when you and I do, we do live streams here from the Blue House with um, our other roommate, the Drifter Luke, and uh, Chris King, and I definitely produce it. Like I get everybody hyped up. We go over the set list before it starts. There's a lot of pre-production. Um, a lot of thumbsing up from behind the camera and me dancing around and giving like that feedback. Uh, do you think that that's help would have been helpful for a full band set or do you think that in that situation you would just like let me be free? Yeah, 
I think that it, it's a precarious balance. I think in a lot of ways, like logistically, that definitely helps. And we had like, the video guy would, would kind of interject when we had like um, a lot of viewers, which was really encouraging because it could have been one viewer, it could have been a thousand, we wouldn't have known any better. Um, and also like, um, if there's any sort of like, you know, it was really hard to remember to stay on the mic because there's a lot, you know, when you're in a room, you can play to, you know, the different reverberations of how a room works. And sometimes going off mic and talking to your audience that way works. It doesn't work in a live stream situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, things like that. But also I think a producer that knows, you're really good at this, but like a producer that knows when to lay off and when to just kind of come in and make those minor adjustments and then, you know, let kind of the art come through. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's a really that's a good transition point there. So you've done the solo or acoustic set in front of the phone. You've done, a, I would say, a produced set with, you know, full audio, everything solo and then you've done the full band um between the three would you say one of them was particularly harder than the other was there anything that was like as you're going through these different experiences of types of live streams were you like oh this is it's like I'm relearning this again or is there mm. anything that was like situational to each one that yeah. you think is important um <clears throat> Again, I think just going back to that idea of showing up as authentically as you can is going to be like the most grounding point that you can you can kind of lean on. And that's kind of seems to be the thread that connects all of them. Um, I would say that probably the, the larger productions are a little bit more, take a little bit more getting used to just because there's so many moving parts and, um, you know, there are other people involved. So there's more opportunity for things to go a lot different than you planned. Um, but you know, I, yeah, I think the more acoustic stuff is easier because it, it's, it's more tailored to this format where it's just, it, everything's very simple. It's just like you open a magic crystal ball and all of a sudden you're in someone's backyard. Um, but when the production comes in, um, it's very hard to, act naturally and make this feel like oh this is something that I do every day and I'm totally used to it um, and you really have to kind of get in this headspace of um, just blind faith and blind confidence of like I know how to do this I have confidence in my craft and the time that I've invested in becoming this person and this performer um, and I just need to like put my ego aside and lean on that 100% um, yeah, it's a lot of just like squinting your eyes, <laughs> pretending like an audience is there, um, and just having that having having that faith and that confidence. Yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about how you prepared for these. So um, I we're so fortunate to have each other and Luke and Chris because we are almost like a team, like a unit, so we can prep together for these. Even if I, I'm not producing the live stream, uh, there's a level of preparation. Um, so one of the things we did was we watched a bunch of live streams to see what we liked and what we didn't like. Yeah. Um, what were the kind of top takeaways you had uh, from watching the live streams that you were like, I'm definitely gonna put that into my repertoire, repertoire as far as performance goes or uh, considerations to make? Yeah. Um, one of the things I think that really stood out to me was um, trying to find spaces to fill the silence um, and not in a way of like just being nervous and talking as much as you can but trying to find creative ways to um, fill those gaps because they the silence was screaming in some of the live streams and not to any fault of the artists it's just it's just a tran it's just a, a transition point and a growing pain, I think, in terms of, of um, a live show versus a, a stream show. Because at a live show, when someone's like tuning in between a song or they're, um, you know, just taking a drink of water, um, you can also do something. Like you can look somewhere else. You can go to the bathroom. You can go to the bar. You can go outside. You can talk to your friend. Yeah, exactly. Um, but when you're streaming, you're completely focused on that. Um, 
and it's very awkward. Like it's like you're suddenly <laughs> yeah. under a microscope, and it's very awkward. Yeah, um, two minutes of tuning feels like like eight. 10 yeah. minutes you're like wow this person's tuning for a long time right and they're not at a show you wouldn't have even noticed but in a live stream you notice right and yeah. there, there's also that element in a live stream of engagement where like if I'm watching a live stream there are literally thousands of other things that I could go watch at any moment so if if someone is not talking to me for like three minutes I I don't I'm not gonna go watch I'm gonna go watch someone that is talking to me by literally just like doing this with my fingers that's <laughs> yeah. all you have to do yeah. and that's not I mean that can be a really scary idea um, it it doesn't have to be I think just you have this captive audience but they're also incredibly flexible so doing as much as you can to concentrate and distill your message um, to like a very concise and rich um, presentation is more important than ever you don't you can't really lean on the fact um, that that people will just stay and watch you standing there staring at them yeah so that was one of the things that was really important um, uh, so a few of the things that we ended up talking about that were helpful in the situation was for the full band which you don't normally do you mic'd everybody yeah. so that it wasn't just you and Brad at the front of the stage like he's tuning and you're getting a drink of water and now there's a pause now everyone had a mic yeah and you guys were able to have a conversation amongst each other so that there wasn't any like if there wasn't anybody yelling from a non mic area and everyone on the TV is like turning it up going like, what did Bryce say? <laughs> Bryce is the drummer. You know, like everyone had a mic, which yeah. I, I loved. It was cool to see everybody talking to each other. There were jokes being passed back and forth. It really took the pressure off one person. Um, and we did the same thing on the like acoustic sets. I, I never just put like the artist in front of the phone and I'm like, bye. Yeah. Like if the artist has, doesn't have another person, like, I also will mic myself so that the producer can talk because it's just like you need somebody else to help you in those situations because you don't have all of those environmental factors to Absolutely. help you yeah um, or even building your set the other thing was building your set in a way where you had very minimal breaks mm -hmm. so that like maybe you wouldn't be so particular about not stopping but you had much bigger areas where you didn't stop yeah um, so that was another consideration that uh, I know that you did. I feel like there was one more thing that we were doing to keep the breaks really minimal. Oh, you like thought about what you were gonna say before you were you went. You yeah. had some pre-made, not statements, but like thoughts and things that you had been going through that you processed that were like, this is going to be one of my transitions. Yeah, and that, that's been a general preparation thing for my shows for a long time, like my, when I do well is when I prepare things before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely going into that knowing, um, having like a general rough outline of how the show um, was gonna go or how we wanted it to go was, was a huge help. Um, and also just um, the whole band was in agreement that we, this was awkward new territory for us and we were going to play um, as hard and as a, as energetic as we could, and that didn't doesn't necessarily mean loud and fast all the time. It means uh, with the intensity of you know pl being on stage and playing your absolute favorite show you've ever been in, just getting into that space. Um, and I think that really helped. Yeah, and you guys talked about it. You didn't just yeah. like show up and be like, all right, now we're gonna play a show. You guys were like, let's have a conversation about. How different this is and let's all go into it prepared yeah I think that's one piece of advice I try to give everyone before anything they do is understand why you're doing it yeah. and how it's different than how you've done it before or what you can lean on in your own you know toolbox of skills um, because I think that's we think that means like weakness or something but as a as a producer like I never let the people I'm working with go cold into a situation even if it's a 10 minute conversation of like let's run through the set list these are where the breaks are what are you feeling today what do you want to talk about do you want to mention the coronavirus do you want to stay completely away from the coronavirus do you want to talk about politics like what are we going to discuss today um, just so that like their brains already like know so when that trigger happens they just sort of like slip right into it yeah um, for so sure. That's my tip. Call somebody, 
even if, if you're you know you live alone you don't have a person like call someone and be like hey I'm gonna do a live stream later today do you mind if I run through this set list with you um, I want to make sure that I'm prepped and just speaking it out into the world I think is really helpful I love that yeah absolutely 100% um, and I think the other that was, that was kind of the big nuggets about breaks is like just being prepped yep minimizing the amount of breaks um, and uh, talking into the mic because you don't have the flexibility to just sort of be like talking you know off of it because as soon as you're as soon as you're not right up to it we can't hear you yeah yeah so those are the takeaways I would say from from that area um, so what else were we gonna discuss oh we we're gonna talk about things that we didn't necessarily like which I don't generally like to go into the negatives but I think it's important to talk a little bit about it um, and was there anything from all the live streams that we watched that you were like a little cringy about? Um, I yeah, uh, I think that there is um, there is a need more than ever to. <clears throat> it kind of ties into what we've been saying, but there is a, a it's a different beast to carry um, a virtual audience than it is to carry a live audience. Um, and I, my performance forte has always been live performance. Um, and I, I know how to stand up in front of a room full of people and show, show them where to go in terms of, um, of my performance, whether it's, uh, you know, acting, improv or music. Um, it's a, it's a different beast when you can't connect with them in person. Um, and I think that it's a very easy trap to fall in to um, think that you, because you, you're not getting that instant feedback, that you don't have to show up with the same level of like energy and intensity. So I think some of the things that, I, that I've seen in live streams that I don't think work are um, just, a, just really low energy, just people that think because they're sitting in their backyard or in their living room um, that they can just show up as they would in their living room. This is such a tough, uh, it's such a tough thing to explain because there's, you know, like I, I push authenticity, but then I also say like, don't just show up like you're showing up in your living room. I think there's a way to convey like auth authenticity plus, which is, um, a, you're still being watched and you're still performing so um, there there's a dynamic that you still need to bring if you want people to hear you and people to listen and and communicate with you so I think it's very much about showing up authentically but with a level of care around and and consideration for the people that you're um, broadcasting to um, and making them feel like they're part of the experience and whether that's engaging directly with the camera and breaking that fourth wall or um, just it, just by the way that you per portray yourself inviting people to watch like even if it's just body language like opening yourself up squaring yourself off with the camera um, things like that um, are going to be so much more engaging than um, just kind of shutting yourself off and like putting your hood up and playing your guitar. That works for some people and maybe that's their authenticity plus, but um, for me I find that the more that I can engage, the more that I can like treat this iPhone like it's the my favorite fan that I just want to like me? have the <laughs> the more I can treat everyone like Nikki Barron, <laughs> uh, the better that experience is going to be. And the, and even in those performances, I pretended like there was an audience so many times. And there were performances like I worked the room, I worked an empty room like there was like. A really handsome man standing at the back of the bar like there was like a pair of like cute ladies dancing in the corner like there was like a pair of you know a couple making out in the back just like I would in a normal situation and you can actually literally create those people in your brain because that is also what your audience is used to seeing they're used to seeing you react to those things mm -hmm. and 
And that is just as much a part of your performance as the performance that you're giving outward. Yeah. I think that's difficult for someone that doesn't perform to understand is like, it is always so much of a conversation. Like it is never just me like barfing out a performance. It is always so much influenced by what's coming back at you. And when you can't get that, have that conversation, you have to, you have to make it, you have yeah. to make it up. And you have to go off of what you know and what you want, what you would want in that situation. Yeah, it was awesome to watch the Thunder Pussy one because you could see how much fun they were having. Yes. And they wore their stage outfits that they're like known for wearing. They showed up just like the crowd was there. Yeah. Um, and that was so fun. And I watched the full thing. Um, and that's a, like, I think they played for like 90 minutes. Um, and I was engaged the whole time. I felt like. I didn't want to look away mm -hmm. and even in the quiet awkward moments you know like I didn't want to look away because it was just this momentum building experience but I've watched some where you know the performer does show up in, in a way that doesn't feel like them like yes you know I, I'm used to seeing them in a certain way um, and then they show up in their sweatpants and you're like come on now like yeah you can be in your living room and and have be streaming from an iPhone my expectation is not that it has to be like high definition like perfect sound or anything but you know like at least show up how I remember seeing you like yeah. um, I've watched the Ben Gibbard live streams he shows up as Ben Gibbard you know like he doesn't come uh, you know in his hoodie and sweatpants like yeah. he's, he looks nice his rooms clean it's a good uh, experience to watch um, Charles Wicklander it's just like seeing him play <laughs> in my backyard like I've seen him play a hundred times but when I watch his live streams I feel like I'm watching Charles he's got yeah. his paintings around him he's he's being Charles he's doing all the things and he is doing the stuff you're talking about which is like eye contact with the camera which feels weird because when you're making like a music video right. the camera the director's always like don't look at the camera but when you're live streaming look at the camera yeah <laughs> talk to me you don't have to be like hey and singing right like that but like make eye contact sometimes don't like actively avoid looking at me because if you if I was standing up the front of the stage you would definitely make eye contact with me periodically um, even if you're not actually making eye contact with me um, there is that I can't remember the name of the term but where you think the person's like looking at you and you're like they're singing right to me oh yeah um, even though you're not, you're like, I can't see anything. The stage lights, you're all just a, a blur, like just a, a mass of darkness and bright spots. But like that, you know, you want to try to still give people that feeling of like, they're singing to me. They know I'm watching yeah, and they're giving that performance to me. So I think the like kind of tangible, practical takeaways I'm hearing are like, show up like it's a real show, which includes not only your stage personality that you have, but your appearance, the cleanliness of your space that you're in, um, uh, and the e expectations, understanding what people expect from you when you're on stage. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is eye contact um, and squaring up to the camera and really engaging with the camera as if that is an audience. Um, and, and if you have to, you can use techniques like imagining like there's a couple in the back making out or there's somebody that you've got your woo man in the back that every time you take a break they're like woo like you know like imagine all those characters that you're used to seeing at your shows absolutely um and try to put yourself in there so that you can keep playing to those people because those people are watching still they're just watching from their living rooms now yeah um and i think that's going to help them stay engaged because you're still acknowledging that person in there yeah so yeah, and you know who's a really good, um, she just popped in my head as an example, um, that I used before this live stream uh, situation, but um, someone that's really good as, at being engaging in front of the, the camera is watching, um, like go on YouTube and watch old um, Loretta Lynn performances. Yes. And she's got this thing where you can't take your eyes off her. Like, I, she's not like an overly dramatic performer, mm -hmm. but the, her, the intensity in her face and she, she does this thing and I'm giving away one of my secrets right now but she does this thing where she it looks like she it knows a joke like there is a joke in her head that you don't know what it is and she is so tickled by it and when she's singing you can kind of see like the sides of her mouth curl up and it's you can't take your eyes off it because it's like 
what does she know? Like, and that's always my tip for like taking a good photo is like always make the face of like, I know something you don't know. And she does that with her music and it's, it's so engaging and it's so interesting and there's something so like sly and mysterious. Um, uh, that, yeah, just go watch old Loretta Lynn videos and she does this really beautiful thing where like you don't have to like, you know, be like a member of the Blue Man group to like put on a good show. You just have to have that something like added something behind your face or behind your voice or whatever um, that, that keeps people engaged. Definitely. Yeah. And all of these things that We've been, we got, we have our own slime, beautiful cat that just sculfed up <laughs> Clementine. Mm -hmm. um, uh, all of these things, you know, we learned not because we're just innately good at streaming. We did our homework and we watched a lot of live streams from, yeah. and not just live streams, but we watched a lot of live shows all the way from as far back as Loretta Lynn to Thunder Pussy who played a lesson three weeks ago. Right. We were watching how people are doing it and picking out the things we like. Um, and then experimenting with them. And so you don't have to just dive right in and just go live. Yes. You know, do your homework, practice. Um, it sounds really weird, but something that we do in marketing and sales is role playing. Call up somebody you trust that you don't mind being vulnerable with and say, can we FaceTime and let me do a show just for you? And I just want you to like take notes about what you like and what you don't like and tell me what it is and just get some feedback yeah because you don't know and your fans aren't gonna and hopefully your fans aren't gonna be like this sucks you know what I mean like maybe some trolls on the internet will they are not up, your fans but those are not your fans you know <laughs> um but you know you might have a friend who will be like oh like when you were tuning I got a little bit like distracted by something on my phone or I chose to look at something else you know like and then now you know like oh maybe I need to change my set so that I tune one less time you yeah. know just getting some real life feedback from somebody you trust, another performer. We tend to run in, <laughs> in circles together. Yeah. So um, that that's a, a, the big thing is, is go into it prepared, not just like, I know I'm gonna play these songs, but I like the way Loretta Lynn kind of has this sly uh, sexiness to her. And I, so I wanna try to bring that to my uh, performance. I w or rewatch your own live performances and go, Oh, I really do this really well yeah. and I'm gonna bring all those really good nuggets into my performance you know um, sure. just like football players you know they watch all the tape you know they don't, there's no foot professional football player out there who doesn't rewatch the games that they play they watch them they watch them as a team they go through all the things they did good and all the things they did bad and they learn from them and they just evolve um, and I know it must feel so weird like I try, I watch my live stream, my videos that I make afterwards and I just cringe the whole time. <laughs> but I learn a lot. Yeah. Um, I learn a lot. You make a good point though. And I think that is to also like forgive yourself. You're like, yeah. expect that you're not going to get this perfect on the first try or the fifth try. And I think that there's also uh, an advantage right now because everyone is kind of stepping into a live stream that there's practice, but also just do it like just get on your personal Facebook page and like grab like a melodica or a guitar or like a couple of spoons and just like go live like see what's gonna happen do it but I like that idea of like just calling someone but also like that sounds terrifying to me like just knowing that like someone one person is off like I would much rather just put something weird up on my personal Facebook page and be like <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing but like small network like watch this um, yeah, and that might be the difference between a performer and a non-performer yeah. for me I'm like I'm gonna call and I think she's watching right now I'm gonna call Amanda and I'm gonna practice this on her and see what she thinks because she's got like the kindest heart and she's gonna give me good feedback in a really gentle and lovely way. Yeah. I would definitely do that first or like call you and be like, yeah. can I try this out on you? Um, then I would do it live yeah. and that's probably the exact opposite of a performer's mindset. They're like, I'd much rather play to like my 30 Facebook <laughs> friends than like call one person and yeah. ask them for their feedback. Yeah, it's, it, it really depends on like who you are and, and how you work. But I, but one of the things like you can listen to everything we say, you can do all the homework, you can watch all the live streams. Um, but the best thing that's going to make you 
come across exactly how you want is just doing it and just getting used to it and I have to say that like the the kind of smaller more casual live streams that we did before the like really formal show helped me immensely because if I would have just gone from six weeks of quarantine to on stage at the nectar I don't care how long I've been performing I don't care how you know experienced I am how many like huge shows and tiny shows I've played that would have been incredibly awkward and it would have shown in my performance and in my face I would have gotten there by the end but it wouldn't have been I wouldn't have felt as immediately comfortable and okay so I would say that like as much as you can just get through that awkward moment and understand that you're not going to nail it at, on the first try um do that like, yeah just do it like do is do homework but at some point you just have to do it you have to like yeah you have to like put it in your body yeah yeah you can read all about how to cast a fishing rod right but eventually you just have to do it the first time just gotta do it Nike, just do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so with the, with kind of the things that you learned from the smaller ones, one of them was the mic technique that you had yes. to be right up on the mic, yes. um, or people couldn't hear you. Um, were there any other things that you took from the small stream into the larger stream that you think are important to like call out um, that weren't ob that wouldn't be obvious? Like it's. That one to me doesn't feel obvious, mm -hmm. but when we were doing our first live stream, people were leaving comments like talking to the mic, talking to the mic, and I and so I was like, oh, yeah, obviously, yeah, <laughs> no one can hear you if you're not. <laughs> Are there any other things that were like obvious to you after the fact, but like, yeah, I would say there's some there's some banter traps that you can get in and like. Um, side interpersonal conversations that are so easy to just kind of go off in because like we're just in the backyard like we do this all the time like I could start talking to you about this Japanese maple and it would feel normal to us but everyone would be like we didn't come here for a horticulture you know like um, so and those side conversations are so much easier to segue into because you're not you're not in the context in the environment you have to kind of create it yourself yeah um, so I think it focus is a huge one like there are so many there it's really easy to get off on like a, a banter tangent or a side conversation if you're working with someone else um, try to stay as focused and as concentrated on your message or your why like you were saying um, and you can and I think it's nice to like show people who you are and what you what's going on in your head but keep it keep it on topic as much as you possibly can or like have a theme like we did a weird thing during ours of like just bringing in different dad jokes and that has nothing to do with our music it has nothing to do with anything it was kind of one of those silence fillers but it was kind of this little beacon that we could come back to when we needed to lean on something so like somebody in the band now that they were all mic'd could tell a weird dad joke and so we had like this like dad joke sub theme of our live stream but we also didn't like just go off and talk about like something random it was we tried to keep everything um, you know as as based in the context of what we were doing as possible and you don't have to do that in, in other situations but I think it's really important here yeah, and I think it was a good way to get people interacting. So you've had like nearly 10,000 between all the places that the your last live stream went live. Um, and you you asked people like, if you guys got any great dad jokes, put them in the comments. Yeah. Um, and people were leaving comments with dad jokes. So it gave them something to interact with outside of the question of, this is a question that everybody asks in their live streams and they also ask it on stage, which it totally works on stage and it can be awkward off like through the live stream is how are you guys doing tonight? If you're not like this, like I can see the comments. So if I ask you, how are you guys doing tonight? It can be like, oh yeah, like it's awesome that you're cooking this or you're doing that or what are you guys up to? Like we can have that because it's very intimate like this. But if you're using the other side of your phone's camera, like the, the back facing camera, or you can't see the comments, and you ask, how are you guys doing tonight? It just leaves a void. You're just like, how are you guys doing tonight? <laughs> I, I'll read those comments later. You know, yes. like that feels weird. Um, so I think when you're interacting with the crowd, we found from the early live streams that I, I as the producer was actually interacting with them and giving them the you know telling the performers what was happening 
Um, and I do that with all the people I produce, so they don't have to like keep their eyes on the comments. I can do that, but if you're doing it solo, um, you know, don't ask questions that you can't respond to. Yeah. Um, and also it becomes not relevant as the replay goes. So if you ask like, like, do you guys enjoy that 80 degree weather today and it's raining when I watch it, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Um, and it kind of takes you out of the experience. Um, and the way Facebook and all these streaming platforms work is they replay the comments at the same time marks every time to give you the experience of it feeling live again, even if you're not live. So you want to make sure that if you ask something, it's going to feel relevant and what people are saying feels relevant no matter what. Yeah. And we also, we had a discussion to that point. We had a discussion before of things that we didn't want to talk about and coronavirus was one of them. Like we made yeah, you a didn't decision mention it at all no because we made a decision that you're you're getting all the information that you need about COVID-19 all the time whenever you want um and it and it plays to that idea of like making content evergreen like you don't need your favorite band to tell you to wash your hands like you don't need your favorite band to tell you to um stay six feet apart like um and and the reason that I tune into a live stream is not to be reminded that there's a global pandemic. The reason that I tune into a live stream is to remove myself from the constant reminder that there is a global pandemic. So yeah. I don't, I, that was just a preference for us. And if there's something that you feel like you really need or want to communicate, fine. Um, but it was just, it was just really important to me for that to feel really timeless and also, um, to give to give my audience something that I know that they couldn't get anywhere else and information about coronavirus or a reminder that coronavirus exists was not on the, was not on my list of like things that I that I needed to communicate and it I think that goes back to like you you can still really care for and look after your audience and that was one of the things that was really important um, that we didn't do for them so yeah yeah, very cool. Um, yeah, so in in marketing, we have a term called virtue signaling, um, and it's basically when you, um, you you it's this sensation of like I'm elevating myself and showing you um, how virtuous I am, and a lot of brands have been doing that. You know, you probably got like a hundred emails in your inbox of people telling you how they're taking care of their employees during this time period, um, and at some point you're just going like yeah that's what you should be doing you should be doing all these things for your employees that's like the bare minimum of what we expect from you um, and you want to stay away from that trap of virtue signaling to where you go from a position of being helpful to shaming unintentionally mm. so when you're constantly saying wash your hands wash your hands wash your hands remember that person on the other side has heard that a thousand times from every single brand every time the governor makes an address yeah it's everywhere constantly do you want to be in that noise or do you want to be the person that like here you don't need to think about it you're at home in your living room just enjoy this moment with us that's my preference too I have been personally very like frustrated by the amount of uh, virtue signaling and uh, unintentional shaming I'm receiving hmm. from my friends on Facebook and Instagram bands I'm watching emails I'm getting like I just I'm just like I'm like muting people now because I just don't want to I can't and you know like the the pandemic has been moving across the world at a different rate so as soon as one region of the world gets to a place where they're no longer yelling at you to stay home the next region is yelling at you and the next yeah. region and so it's it's like been for like three months that people are yelling at me to stay home and I'm yeah. staying home and I you think like oh well then don't listen to it I'm not talking to you you're talking to me yeah anything you're saying you're saying to me directly and it's not so easy to go like oh she means somebody else right yeah I think just focusing on like what you can give people instead of what you can take away from them you know yeah. so like empower your audience um, you know don't don't tell them what to do or how to live just show them what it means to enjoy themselves and have a good time yeah Definitely. And it's totally okay if you say like, I've been staying home. I've been home this long. Like talk about what you're personally doing yeah. for yourself and, and stay away from the, 
do this, do this, do this. I'm just like so tired of hearing it. Yeah. As a fan, I watch a lot of live streams and I'm just like, please, if one more person tells me to wash my hands, I'm going to lose it. I'm just so, I'm, I'm exhausted by it. Yeah. I'm exhausted by it. I and I just want to tune out. Um, you know, I'm staying home. I'm washing my hands. I'm, you know, I call it physical distancing, not social distancing. That just or like hurts me to think about like as a social person so I physically distance I do all the things and I just like want to be in the warm cocoon of my favorite artists just like hold me <laughs> we are not physically distancing there we are not. We are um not. yeah so that's that's uh transitioning back to what we were talking about of um things that you learned from the smaller streams into the bigger ones just to kind of recap that idea it's that there are banter traps and be aware of your banter traps and understand that you don't have the back and forth conversation in some situations and when you don't have it you know be aware that when you ask how are you guys doing tonight that I might be watching it at 10 in the morning um, and that timely timeliness matters um, that you need to make a decision about, are you gonna mention the pandemic or not? And if you are, how are you gonna do that? And how do you think your audience is gonna interpret it? Yes. Um, and that can apply to other things too, like not just the pandemic. Like we have that conversation about politics too. Like, are we gonna get political? Um, you know, like when, when, do you, when is it worth saying something and when is it not? And again, it goes back to the why. Like, who is this band? What is our message? What do we want to convey? Do we want to talk about, um, you know, like how scary the world is right now? Or do we want to just like paint it in a really pretty color? Both yeah. are useful and it just depends on um, your intention. And your stream is reaching new people. So maybe you say something like, you know, like fuck Trump. And now somebody out there who doesn't normally watch your stream, doesn't come to your shows, maybe found you on Spotify, is watching this stream, and now you got a troll in your comments that you have to deal with. Yeah, I mean... And are you prepared to deal with that? I personally am. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> but some people are not prepared and don't want to deal with that person coming into their comments. So understanding that whatever you say is amplified, and now you have... A huge barrier you know think about people you know and you love and how much crazy stuff you've been seeing them post and you're going like how have I been friends with this person for t 10 20 years and I never knew that they were a pandemic guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that guy is now in your comments watching your stream but maybe never came to one of your live shows but now watches your stream and is in your comments harassing your fans and doing all of that so just understanding that what you do say is amplified is now in the area of that internet anonymity um, and you have to be willing to deal with that mm -hmm. um, and Just be really clear on your focus and and your message and who you are um, you can have a really strong political opinion um, and be in a band that doesn't talk about your really strong political opinion and that can't and it's not you know, I don't, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it, it will, it will translate. I, it just comes back to that, like, give more than you take away. So if you want to take away someone's belief, whether you believe in it or not, um, it, it, you're going to feel that in the live stream. So like, yeah. this is about giving not only to your, a, a live stream, a performance in general is about giving not only to yourself, but to your audience. Um, so just remember that when you dis when you decide what's important and what you want to communicate. Yeah. Um, so I'll link Taylor's live stream in the comments here so you guys can see uh, the three that she's done. So you can kind of see the evolution of them if you want to watch them. Um, now that you've done three live streams, three different formats. You've done a simple phone. We did it with Tim's. Um, it was kind of in the style of a round. You guys, you and the Drifter Luke and Chris King shared songs and you hosted. You took the, ho the role of host to kind of keep things flowing. You did that one, it was just a phone setup. Um, the next one you did, or the other one we did was everybody was mic'd, all the sound was coming in, much more complicated, kind of the medium mm -hmm. live stream. Um, and then you had your full, your full band one. After all three of those, is there any learnings you have that you're gonna take into the next one? Um. Yeah, I think on a more superficial note, um, what you wear is really important. I stand by it. So for one of the streams, she wore her silk robe. We all bought 
matching silk robes um, for roommate hangs, uh, and one of them you wore it, and I was for the robe. Oh, I'm totally. Oh, so it pro wasn't robe. the robe. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were like, I shouldn't have worn that robe. I, I was like, I like the robe personally. I thought it was great. It was a brunch stream, so it was like at eleven. It was another one that was like at eleven. So yeah. we're like, why not? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I just think like uh, going back to that thunder pussy one. Like I think giving. Just being a little extra is really fun to watch because we have this opportunity to mm -hmm. be a little extra, um, and that and I like that. Um, not to like don't like go and put on all of your accessories and be like it's a live stream, but um, also like just yeah, just putting on something that makes you really comfortable, but also makes you feel like this is a special, mm -hmm. a special thing like that robe makes me feel special when I like I feel like a very fancy lady yeah. um and so that that was good like I but um adorn your body with something that makes you feel like you um but also that that um it's a little extra be a little extra you have my permission um yeah Chai Lee, um he's been he does these morning live streams in his jammies and he has like dinosaur jammies Perfect. and it, yeah and it really suits his like music which is all about like love and happiness and and going after what you want to do so it really fits him and it's cute and i yeah. like it so yeah i feel like he makes it a little extra yeah um, and these things sure. are going to exist so much longer than your than your live stream or i'm sorry than your live performance yeah. it's all the same now um so also like remember that and that that can be really intimidating because it's like I love to just do something and then and then have it never exist again whether it was the greatest thing or the worst thing in the world I love that feeling that's why I love improv comedy is like you can do something that's the most genius thing you've ever done and you or you could do something that is the most garbage thing you've ever done and it's going to go in the vault in the same way mm -hmm. like that's great this is a different beast like it is going to live unless you have the control to delete your live stream um it's going to live as long as it's going to live so um remember that in the way that you show up not only um with all the things that we've talked about but just um physically do show up in a way that you feel comfortable and and happy and most authentic like if it's dinosaur jammies awesome yeah so, so that's something that i would definitely um kind of continue to do um and also yeah I think it, uh, the the biggest thing that I've learned is just um finding that interaction and um finding ways to hold your audience um not only in their focus but in in their experience um without being in the same the same room as them there was yeah. one more thing I wanted to say just keep refining it yeah from a producer perspective um I'm really interested in that. So I'm a very technical person, photographer, videographer. I have all the gear to stream in, in the highest definition. Um, like, and I'm just sort of like, yeah, that's all good and great. Because if I do that and the performer is um, not showing up how I'm used to seeing them, and then I see, I'm like frustrated by that. Um, and so for me, just trying to think about like, how do I help coach them into their full true self that they give on stage? For the video because that's when I'm the most proud even though I've done all the things I was supposed to do as my job um, if I didn't help the artist show up in a way that they're like yeah I'm really excited about that like I feel like I haven't done it I haven't really truly done my job even though all my boxes are checked so I think the big thing I'm learning through the live streams is just that pre prep like yeah I want to add more prep to all my live streams like I already do a meeting beforehand like the day before and an hour before the stream starts but I want to do like even more like have a discussion about streams that we like like get really into it and figure out what it is about this particular stream that's going to be different than the next one we do and the next one we do what about it is this unique experience where like every time I tune in I'm gonna get something different whether it's not playing the same songs every time yeah. or um, doing, you know, uh, Luke and I have been talking about doing one where it's like a live song, songwriting session and we actually watch a, sh a song go from a song seed to uh, a pretty well, you know, uh, meaty full song um, in one session and trying to show the behind the scenes of what it's like to be um, an artist and, and trying to find those interesting things that are going to keep people coming back for more and um, 
and engaging and growing. So I'm really fascinated by like, how do we make the performances, like like you said, like unique. Like I can think of, like my one of my favorite bands X. I saw them uh, in December, and it was like one of the greatest shows of my life. And I remember every moment of it, and it's just like burned into my memory. And I don't have a video of it. Um, if I had, oh my God, that would be amazing. So we kind of have that opportunity to give people that experience in a way that they can rewatch it and rewatch it and be like, oh, yeah. I love that moment. I think it's so good. Yeah. Um, so just thinking about that, like what are the cool, unique things that the artists I work with bring to the table that now we would not have been able to show? Yeah. I can't do a live show in a, in a venue of Luke co-writing a song with somebody. That, yeah. I mean, you can't do that. Um, it would be really awkward. Um, you, you know, you'd lose people's focus, but to be able to do that um, in a video format, you definitely could do that because yeah. you can change the perspective of the camera. You can um, ask follow-up questions. You can do all that stuff that's like pretty cool and unique. Um, and if it's your favorite artist, there's plenty of artists that I want to know how they wrote a song or how they write a song, how they approach it. So there's lots of cool little things that we can do. So that's kind of my thing. I'm trying to, my next transition point as uh, a producer is like, how do we get like, how do we turn these live streams from the same sets every week, which you can get away with when you're playing a bunch of different venues, into every stream feels different and cool yeah. and worth donating every time and like, and past like, I just want to support my favorite artists, but like, I'm paying you because you're like doing something that's changing me. Yes. Yeah, and like I, I do at a show, you know, I'm not just like going, you're my favorite artist. In that case, I'll just subscribe to your Patreon because I, I believe in your music and I want to give that to you. Um, but I love like this, I love tuning in and feeling like, like, and I'm sure other people feel this, but like they earned it. Mm -hmm. I want to feel like, and I know I feel that way. I don't want somebody just to give me money because they love me. I want to feel like I earned it. It's probably a very American <laughs> uh, approach, but I think that there's some cool, really cool things happening um, that I'm seeing artists do and that I want to try to do with my artists to like really make it cool and unique and make it like uh, make it different yeah you know, don't just try to take what happens on the stage and put it on the phone but rather rethink the whole process of, of that and I think that I think that there are some really cool people out there doing that yeah and I think you bring up a good point that it's easy to focus on all of the things that we're losing and and not having a live or not having a live performance um but there are so many hidden and new benefits things that we haven't even discovered yet um that will change performance and will change the art form um in a very cool way mm -hmm. like you do you know you do have this uh license now to do things like uh, that you wouldn't normally do on stage and even like even in our live show like we could we were able to bring it down to like a really quiet moody place for like a song or two um, where if we were playing like a big room full of you know 3,000 people which were the people that were watching um, we wouldn't have been able to do that and so like there are there are so many hidden benefits to uh, the live stream platform mm -hmm. that that are different and it's and and I think when and when you focus on what can I bring into this instead of what am I losing from not being able to do this you find those things and totally. those are the things that will keep your audience engaged and will keep people coming back um, and I think that will help to make all of this transition evolve into a place that's actually really cool instead of all of us just sitting here like crying about how much we miss going you know to the tractor yeah yeah and i definitely do i miss the tractor, <laughs> I, miss the <laughs> I miss the tractor for sure and i miss live shows and i i do for sure and i really look forward to some form of that coming back mm -hmm. but i i have really enjoyed the changes in and the window I now have into the artists that I love. Yeah. Um, and and I think it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. And, you know, we, we have space to mourn and all of that, but as artists, you know, we are supposed to process. That's like what art does. It's right. for processing, and you're pulling your audience along as you process. 
so eventually we have to get to that place where we are like you know what I'm gonna make lemonade out of these lemons yeah and I think one of the things is you can dramatically increase your reach in such small uh, with like zero effort like we played to the biggest room that we've ever played on this live stream and there's no way that we could have gotten 6,000 10,000 people into nectar um, to see that one specific show um, yeah. but we're still playing that show in eternity and people are still watching it and so that is another mm -hmm. huge benefit of like you, people can find you without having to leave their couch and you don't know who's sitting on their couch right no. now like you don't know um, if there's you know someone that you really truly need to and want to be connected with um, if you kind of creep across their um, desktop that's way more possible now than it ever has been. So, um, yeah, yeah, just utilizing that and sharing that and 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 showing up in in those places exactly how you want to be. Um, that's a huge benefit. Yeah, and this is sort of not necessarily performance related, but uh, that makes me think about how um, once you have dialed in your performance and you're feeling really good about what you can offer on a live stream, is you can shop that around in a partnership format um, to brands that you love and to other bands and you can do international shows if you know you can connect with a band in London and in France and do a stream where all three of you play to each other's audiences and that would have been very expensive and hard to do you know in yeah. person but now you have this really cool opportunity uh, maybe there's a, a, a brand that you love that they are looking for content for their communities and they're like, what am I going to fill all this space with? You. Yeah. <laughs> um, and if you find the right audience and the right brand, like you could pick up a lot of fans. Um, and if your performance, you know, if your performance is good, you are picking those people up and it is spreading around. Um, and it does translate um, those KEXP in sessions. You know, the reason every band wants to play one is not only because it's such a privilege, but because KXP's reach is so high that every time somebody finds one, they're making a purchase on your website to buy something. Yeah, they're, and it they're legitimizes. going and subscribing. Yeah, yeah. So, and I see that <clears throat> with Chris, like Chris King, you know, their live stream plays on KXP. You know, it's always playing on YouTube, and he gets a new fan all the time, and they pick up vinyls, and he's sending vinyls all over the world, and he's never toured in France and Germany and all these places, and now he's building these audiences. Um, that whenever this does go back to normal he's gonna go to France and have these audiences there that he wouldn't have had if he hadn't been a part of a live stream um, and it's all it's meshing all connected. together it's all connected <laughs> and all meshing together so it's a pretty cool opportunity and I think it does it does start with the performance 100% um, like I said I can do all the technical in the world I can make your stream look like you spent a million dollars on it and sound like a million dollars but if you're not practicing and honing the art of performing to a camera no amount of production is gonna help you yeah um, and look at the art look at Lizzo oh my gosh I will watch her sing in her hot tub I don't care it's her phone all her stuff like basically on her social media is just her and her you know Friend, seem like friends slash people that work for her, but they seem to have a great connection. Um, and she's just amazing. Like I love watching her live streams. I like she'll tune in and she'll do meditations with her flute and like she's got stones and it's just such a great experience. And I, it's just her phone. It's not about the production. It's about what she's offering me. And she's not just setting up her camera and singing into it. She's playing. Her She's playing her flute. She's doing stuff that's authentic to her, that's her brand. You know, she gets on there and just gives you like affirmations to, to say like with her and like, it's just her brand and it's just- I gotta start watching this. <laughs> Seriously, she does. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Sometimes she brings in guests, like it's really cool. Um, and and so it's not, a, I wanted to do this this conversation specifically because most people have been inquiring with me about helping them get set up with the production. And I've been working on a blog post and every time I get in there to start writing it, I'm like, I know I'm talking about this adapter that you need and I know that's what people think, but like this adapter is not what's going to help your stream be effective. It's what you do once I hit 
go live. So I hope that this conversation um, was helpful um, to help you work on those skills. It's just like your performance skills. It's just like your guitar playing skills. It's your singing skills. It takes practice. It takes study um, and experimentation. So do a little, kind of what we found was do a little homework, make some decisions about what you want to try, go live and try it, watch the live stream, figure out of that stuff that worked and didn't work and do it again. And just yeah. keep doing that and changing and evolving and experimenting with new stuff um, because this isn't going away. And if no. you want to use this as a way to increase your audience so that when things do get some form of normal, it actually benefited you to be streaming, um, then you're going to have to work on the performance because at the end of the day, the stream can be perfectly uh, set up technically, but if you're not in it and there, it's not going to do any good for you. Yeah, and also, uh, if you've never played to like a big audience and a big room, give yourself permission to do that now. You know, like I think, yeah. I, like I, I can recall those moments um, because I've been fortunate enough to to do them. Um, but you don't, you don't need that. Like I, I think um, you c give yourself permission to be as as big and as successful an artist um, as you ever wanted to be um, come from that place when you are um, streaming come from that place when you are performing you don't have to know what that looks like at all like go you know watch a Billie Eilish show where she's like playing to a stadium full of just like a sea of bodies um, and just understand what that feels like. Put yourself in her position for a second and be like, oh wow, yeah, no, I kind of I kind of get what that would be. Like watch Bohemian Rhapsody and like feel yeah. like what it's like to be Freddie Mercury. Like just just go to that place and now more than ever just give yourself permission to be the biggest most charismatic successful performer first. No one has to legitimize you, but come from that place when you when you hit go live. And, yes. and feel like you are that person and you'll be surprised at, at how instantly that connection is made and how effectively that comes across um, because you are your biggest block in so many ways and you know the little gremlin inside your head that's telling you um, you don't have it you're not good enough um, will control you if you let it so um, this is licensed to be Freddie Mercury in yes. whatever capacity that means to you. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Be Freddie Mercury. Yeah, for sure. Like, um, even before I start a live stream, I always, I'm always like, it doesn't matter how many people are streaming. Yeah. I'm still going to prepare for two hours. I'm gonna pre-write all my questions. I'm gonna prep with my person I'm writing, interviewing, or my own work, and I go for it as if it's going to be a million streams. One hundred percent. Because otherwise. Why? <laughs> Why? Why do it if I'm not gonna do it all the way? Well, yeah, um, absolutely. And and yeah, and you have that uh, anonymity. You know, I'd say you have that freedom. You're safe. Like you're the safest you're you've ever been. <laughs> and if and if it if it's weird and it's awkward, you can delete it later. But like, take the risk. You know, do the thing. Um, no one is going to like come and like give you the hook off of your in your backyard like just yeah just do it you're you're so totally um safe and supported yeah uh because we can also curate the channels so like you can curate your audience in a way that um will allow you to experiment and and make the choices that you want to do something really cool well, thanks so much for watching. I uh, hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. I always uh, stay on top of those. You can also just email me. Uh, it's hello at kittenteeth.marketing um, or send me a message here on Facebook. I'd love to hear from you. Bye. Thanks, Taylor. Bye.